What's up guys? Um, so I thought I'd do a bit of a walk and talk because I spent so much of my time like editing, like trying to make the videos that I make kind of snappy and catchy and you know stimulating. Um, I suppose it comes from like a deep element of insecurity of like, well, if I don't put like flashing titles and like quick fade and sound effects, you know, to make everything like really jolt and just catch you and stop your mind from wondering. If I don't make it like that, then you'll get bored of me. You'll just get bored of what I'm saying and your mind will drift. And But sometimes like it's nice to just have a, you know, an organic, uh, authentic. That's the key word these days, isn't it? Authentic. Are you authentic online? What is your online personality like? So um, anyway, I thought I would do a... I thought I'd talk today about the state that America has got itself in politically, because so much of the news at the moment, understandably, is around the autumn statement, around what Jeremy Hunt could or could not do to alleviate some of the pain through the cost of living crisis, how he's going to balance that against supposedly immoral taxes. I've done a whole video about this. So if you're interested about that, go watch the punk politics one uh, that went up earlier or last yesterday. It'll be by the time you see this. Uh, at four o'clock. But I wanted to talk for a minute about the state that America is. So a lot of the time when we talk about nations in decline, we talk about it in the context of empathy, don't we? Like we don't want people to hurt. We don't want people to struggle. We want our children to have the same life chances, lifestyle and opportunities that we have or that our parents have had. As a minimum, you know, we want things to get better. That's where most of the left-leaning lobbying and campaigning comes from. It's a place of compassion, wanting people to be okay. But a lot of the time it's also simultaneously coming from a place of political, fiscal, economic nurture and protection. And what I mean by that is if you look after people, if you make sure that people are okay, then they kind of stay okay socially. You know, if people have got a stake in society, they own a house, they're slowly paying off the mortgage. I mean, I suppose if you panned out, you could look at it like nationally and internationally, like that is a sort of slavery, really, isn't it? It's like keeping people going into work every day, every week, so they could just keep paying it off. And one day I'll be financially free. When's that going to be? When I'm, when I'm, I'm too old to, to really do anything or enjoy myself. But for the most part, you know, people are socially, financially okay, then they remain behaviorally okay. I think the problem that America has is that they've allowed themselves to descend through, I don't know, incompetence or greed, possibly both, into a state where people are not okay and they're becoming more not okay at a faster and faster rate. And I suppose it's not exclusive to America, you know, like the 50s, the 60s over here, people were able to get onto the ladder. You know, I don't need to go into one about the housing crisis and how much more expensive property is now, how not far your pounds go versus what kind of house your parents could have bought. But America is also like a sort of exaggerated version of some of the issues that we have over here. Like they don't have health care to look after their people. They only have unemployment like welfare for a certain number of weeks or months, isn't it? That they'll look after people. And then after that, you're just like on your own, <laughs> which is probably why they have such a bigger, you know, tent city problem compared to us. Like if you've never gone on YouTube and then searched for walking videos, tourist videos where people just walk around like Los Angeles, places like Skid Row, places in San Francisco. They're just, they've just become like homeless cities now. And it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but honestly, like go and watch some of these videos. It's just like cars driving around and like all, all up the sidewalk, all up the pavement is just tent after tent after tent after tent. Now, when you have that much deprivation, that much nation in decline, no social security or relatively no social security. People get desperate and people through kind of largely no fault of their own. I mean, look, we can throw around adjectives and nouns at people and go, oh, you idiot, like you believe them. But people, as they get more desperate, they will start to look for a sort of strong character will promise them the world. And unfortunately in America, what they have is Donald Trump, who's been selling them this dream 
of, you know, we need to get back to the good old days, back to a go that golden era where we made things in America, reopen the coal mines, reopen the oil, you know, drill, baby, drill. Of course we can be an amazing America again. It's just that they don't want you to be amazing. Uh, you know, people are ripe for falling for it, for subscribing to this idea that, that they could have nice things if it was just not for, you know, the Biden camp or the left or whoever uh, withdrawing those opportunities or blowing money on progressive initiatives that have no material benefit or like that's that's a big thing isn't it you know why why are we hiring diversity workshop people why are we wasting all this money on this when we should be plowing it into that or why are we winding down fossil fuel drilling and when that could be strengthening our economy and giving people the jobs and the salaries that they actually need to get back to the good of it's like that sort of narrative right people are ripe for falling for that sort of stuff because they can feel their own lives getting harder and the dollar's not going far enough. And so when somebody gives them a simple story like that, and it kind of makes mathematical sense, you know, at face value, oh, that's why there's no money to keep the doctor's surgery open, because these clowns are wasting it on diversity workshops. Like it make you can understand how, to somebody who's not politically aware or who's just too busy to stay up to date with the news or who doesn't understand how these things work, like that would kind of make sense, it would resonate, right? Now, the problem is, if you don't nurture your population, if you don't look after them, they will begin to subscribe to these ideas. As their lives get harder, they look for some way that that should make sense and how to dig themselves out of it. And if someone of a certain character rises up and says, it's because this guy over here took it all from you, then that's when you start down this dangerous path that the US has now, where they're basically in too deep. I mean, 18 months ago, I would have told you that I thought the US was probably on course for a civil war. There's probably TikToks of mine still like banded about, you know, where people have said, oh, you're being hysterical. And I truly thought at one stage, yeah, they are probably, that's, that's the most natural, most likely output of these, this set of variables here. But now I actually don't think there will be a civil war. And I'll tell you why, because Trump is on course to win. Uh, I think it's five out of six key states he is polling in the lead for. And if you listen to podcasts like The News Agents, or if you listen to some of the Vox Pops from stateside, where they talk to people in, in these states, and they say, you know, why are you voting for Trump? Why don't you believe Biden? Are you not aware that Biden's done this stuff and that stuff? And like, he's actually improved your life. He's, <laughs> he's made good changes. He's strengthened the economy. Inflation is down. And again and again, they just either don't believe it, or the positive changes that Biden is able to implement are just getting eclipsed by this narrative that he's old and he's tired and he's not really up to it and the changes that he is making though positive are not enough for them to feel it in any real way you know and so yeah like where's where my head is at now is i don't any longer think that there will be a civil war in america i think just trump will win and i think because the left don't tend to be as crazy and radicalized I mean, look, there are crazy people on the left. There's no doubt about that. We've all seen them. <laughs> We've all seen interviews and panelists where they're sort of on our team. But then when we see their response to a question, we're like, oh, God, <laughs> like it's it's hard enough being on this side of the political way. Can, can, can you just tone it down. But yeah, I think if and when Trump does win, I think the left will just kind of take it. I don't think there'll be any riots or anything. I don't think you'll see a repeat of January the 6th. If Biden loses. And then I think it's actually, you know, maybe it's a little bit darker, a bit scarier. I think what will happen is Trump will get into the White House. I think he will seek to pass, firstly, his anti-immigrant policies. But then I think those anti-immigrant policies will be expanded out to cover political dissidents under the guise of national security, disloyalty. Uh, treachery and then I think you will begin to see something similar to an enabling act I think you'll see Trump's Republican Party remove restrictions in terms of how long he could be president for I mean look he's no spring chicken right so he's not going to be president forever but I think you will see a changed Republican Party given carte blanche in terms of how long they can govern for He'll probably write a law that says he can just hand power over to his son without an election. And here's the really frightening part is I think if you asked a lot of Americans right now, what is more important to you? Uh, maintaining democracy or getting Biden out of the White House? Would you rather have Trump or democracy? Which one would you like? Which is more important? I think 
a lot of Americans would choose Trump. I think the idea of democracy and freedom, even though they wave their flags around endlessly and they're very proud of being, you know, land of the free, supposedly. Nobody tell them about Amsterdam, where you can actually be a bit more free. Um, I think the idea of democracy and freedom and stuff, I think that's very much second fiddle to them feeling like their team has won. And it's almost paradoxical because what are they fighting for? It's like they're fighting for the soul of America. The battle for the soul of America with the 2024 election is on, guys. It's a battle for, it's a war for the soul of America. Well, what is the soul of America to you? Is it not, is it freedom and democracy? What are you fighting for?